Hello. On behalf of Erie Arts and Culture, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the first annual Arts and Agency Week, a virtual event designed to explore the ways the arts are being leveraged to raise awareness of systemic issues, amplify underrepresented voices, and generate creative solutions to, so to societal challenges. Funding for Arts and Agency Week was provided in a part by the Erie Community Foundation through their Shaping Tomorrow grant program. My name is Sanada Alihodzic, and I am the program coordinator for community resources at International Institute of Erie. International Institute of Erie mission is to protect and address the needs of persons in forced or volunteering migration uh, worldwide and support their transition to a dig dignified life. Uh, Mr. Franco, today I have uh, the privilege to introduce Mr. Franco, Andres Franco. So Mr. Franco was appointed Executive Director of City of Asylum in October 2020 recognized globally for providing sanctuary and community for endangering literary writers, City of Asylum is now in its 16th year. Mr. Franco's new role with City of Asylum allows him to fuse his commitment to creative free expression with his real life experience as a foreign born artist in Pittsburgh. A native of Medellin, Colombia, Mr. Franco became U.S. citizen in 2015. Mr. Franco formerly served as a resident conductor of the Pittsburgh uh, Symphony. Mr. Franco is with us today to speak about their work with City of Asylum. City of Asylum builds a just community by protecting and celebrate creative free expression. They provide sanctuary to endangered literary writers so that the writers can continue to write and their voices are not silenced. They offer a broad range of free literary arts and humanities program in a community setting to build social equity through cultural exchange. And by transforming blighted properties into homes for their programs, they This presentation is live streaming through Zoom, as well as the Arts and Culture uh, Facebook page and YouTube channel. The session will continue with uh, Q&A. If you have questions, please type, uh, type, them, type them in the box at the end of presentation. I will read the questions to Mr. Franco for answering. We thank you for being with us today and we hope you enjoy the presentation presentation. Mr. Franco, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Sanana, for the introduction. I also would like to thank uh, Patrick Fishers with Erie Arts and Culture for inviting me uh, to make this presentation uh, on behalf of City of Asylum. I think uh, our mission really speaks to the theme of uh, this uh, Arts and Agency Week. Uh, we have seen how the artists that we have brought uh, to Pittsburgh have really transformed not only the community, but also the city and have inspired us to continue our mission uh, to protect and celebrate creative free expression. I also wanted to let you know that uh, I actually have been uh, in Erie a couple of times. Um, my wife and I started hiking during the pandemic uh, quite a lot, and uh, we have been a couple of times uh, to Presque Isle. We really love sitting there by the lake. So I know where Erie is. And a good friend of mine is the music director of the Erie Philharmonic. So I know, I know the city has uh, great cultural institutions as well. Uh, you can see behind me, what I have behind me is not a, a background. It's actually, uh, it's, it is actually the, a wall in my office. And I think that wall really represents what City of Asylum is about. You, you will actually see a larger version of this uh, picture uh, very soon. And uh, let me start uh, uh, talking about City of Asylum. So I have prepared a presentation for you that I'm going to start right now. 
So we are located in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, if, you, if you come here, you will find our neighborhood is called the Central North Side. And it's a very diverse neighborhood. Uh, we are in, in an area that is called the Mexican War Street. Uh, in this neighborhood, you have a lot of uh, different uh, incomes and uh, races and ethnicities mixed together. And many of the houses uh, date back to the 1850s. Uh, and when you are here, you will find a street that is called Samsonia Way. And that street is uh, just 828 feet long by 21 feet wide. And what you're seeing here in front of you are some of the houses where the writers in residence uh, currently live. So I wanted to start today by telling you um, about the uh, history of City of Asylum. Uh, there were two people that were very important uh, at the beginning of City of Asylum. Uh, one of them is the author Salman Rushdie. Uh, if you remember, uh, Rushdie uh, received threats. There was a fatwa, basically a, uh, an assassination order that was issued by Iran, and he had to go underground uh, in order to save his life. And uh, while this was happening, he realized that he was able to do it because he, you know, one, he was a very famous writer, uh, and he had a network of friends and people who knew him and admired him. And two, he was, uh, he had just written a couple of books that were very successful. So he also had access to the financial resources that allowed him uh, to stay underground and in hiding for many, many years. Uh, there's a great book that he wrote, it's called uh, Joseph Anton, is uh, his memoir of this particular time in his life. But he also realized that there are many writers around the world that uh, do not have the resources or the network to be able to do so. So uh, around 1993, he created the International uh, Parliament of Writers with uh, other writers that, that shared his concern. And uh, they were very concerned in particular uh, about writers from Algeria that were being murdered at the time. And uh, the idea with this uh, organization was to be able to provide writers from around the world with a safe home uh, so they could leave their countries because they were being persecuted, uh, they were being censored, incarcerated, and of course, assassinated as well. So Salman Rushdie, when he was uh, re resurfacing into public life, he came to Pittsburgh in 1997, and he was uh, doing a series of talks all around the world. And in the one here in Pittsburgh, he mentioned um, uh, this idea of providing a safe home for endangered writers. And our two co-founders, Diane Samuels and Henry Rees, were in the audience and they were inspired by this idea of you know bringing an endangered artist into uh, Pittsburgh. So they started trying to con contact the organization eventually in 2003 they were able to contact them and by 2004 they founded City of Asylum here in Pittsburgh. Uh, just a, a parenthesis here to mention that eventually that that uh, movement became the, the Cities of Asylum movement, and then it was later renamed to uh, Cities of Refuge. And there is now a network, the International Cities of Refuge Network, ICORN, that is based in Norway, uh, and we are the U.S. headquarters of that uh, of that organization. So there are about 70 plus cities around the world that uh, do similar work to what we do here. Uh, in Pittsburgh. Now, uh, we, City of Asylum Pittsburgh, are the only one in the world that is uh, grassroots supported, is a community effort. Many of the other cities of asylum have a connection either with a university or with a city that funds them. We are the only ones that is uh, really an independent organization. Of course, we do have partnerships with universities and we do have partnerships and projects uh, with uh, the City of Pittsburgh, but uh, we are not sponsored by either one of those. So, when uh, Diane and Henry uh, founded City of Asylum, they brought the other gentleman that you see in the picture, Wan Zhang. He is a Chinese writer who had been incarcerated in China for, for many, many years, and uh, eventually he had stopped uh, writing at all. And when he uh, finally made it to uh, City of Asylum Pittsburgh, he was really happy to be able to express himself again. Uh, one of the first things he wanted to do when he found that he would be able to express freely 
was to uh, paint his poetry. He, he said that there's a Chinese tradition of uh, painting with uh, beautiful calligraphy, your poems on rocks. And if you have been to Pittsburgh, there's a beautiful mountain here in the middle of Mount Washington. And he said, I want to uh, paint my poetry on the side of uh, Mount Washington. So uh, that, that, was, that was a great idea. You know, with Mount Washington painting, Mount Washington was probably uh, a little hard to do, but uh, our co-founders suggested, why don't we start by painting your poetry on the facade of uh, the house, of the house where you're living. And here you see uh, the house on the left is the house uh, when he was starting uh, to paint his uh, poems on the facade. And you can see uh, the, the work in progress. Um, and then he finished the house. And this is the next uh, image, image you see. This is the finished house called the house poem. And it is located in Samsonia Way, that little street, 828 feet by uh, 25 that I mentioned and showed earlier. Um, this became something very important. Uh, we call them house publications. This first one is called the house poem. And they are basically public art, uh, text-based public art uh, on the facades of the houses where the writers uh, live. So I'll show you, uh, we have finished four to date. Uh, you can see the house poem to the left. We have the winged house next to it. We have the Burma house in the middle, and then we have the jazz house on the right. And each one of those houses obviously has this uh, public art element to it, but there's also text that is uh, connected to it. And each one of them um, had the, the, you know, brought different uh, authors uh, whose works were used in the creation of the different houses. So by doing this, Wang Zhang started changing the face of the neighborhood. So the, the street Samsonia Way looks very different now than it did before City of Asylum came into existence. And it shows you really how art can uh, literally transform uh, uh, a city, in this particular case, our neighborhood in the north side. Uh, in addition to, to uh, uh, house publications, we also have uh, a public reading garden. It's called the Alphabet Reading Garden. Uh, that is open year round. Anyone can come in and stroll and uh, you see there towards the back, uh, those tiles are all based on alphabets. Uh, so you'll see different letters, different characters from many, many alphabets, uh, including uh, you know, Arabic, uh, Amharic, uh, Spanish, all, all the Western European languages, uh, as well as you know, Hebrew and uh, Japanese, Chinese, many, many other. Um, we also redeveloped uh, this building. It was a Masonic uh, hall that is here on the north side. And it had been uh, abandoned for many, many years. And uh, after many attempts to redevelop it, uh, City of Asylum eventually was able to uh, create this beautiful space that you see. So this is the finished uh, building. And this is where I am right now uh, in my office in, in uh, the Masonic uh, building. So um, as I mentioned, uh, Wang Zhang was able to finally express himself uh, when he came to Pittsburgh. Uh, he had been incarcerated for many years. He had been tortured in China. Uh, one of the most cruel things that were done to him was uh, they, they really destroyed his uh, teeth. And Chinese poetry has uh, many elements. One of them is the one I, that I showed earlier is the calligraphy, the beauty of, of the characters themselves uh, that he was able to paint on the facade of the house. The other element is an oral element where is a performance when you really has, have to speak aloud the words uh, for them to become alive. And because his uh, teeth were in such bad shape, there were uh, sounds that he was not able to pronounce anymore. So they literally silenced him by uh, making it impossible for him to read his poetry uh, aloud. So that was something that was very important uh, when he came to Pittsburgh was to restore the health, but it's not just the physical health of, of having uh, the, your teeth uh, worked on, but it was also uh, making sure that he would have his voice restored uh, both figuratively, but also literally that he would be able to speak. 
So Wang Zhang uh, is a, a force of nature. And when he was able to speak and express himself, he would do it for anyone who, who would be interested in his uh, poetry. He is an extraordinary performer. And even when he is uh, reading his po poetry in Chinese, you may not understand the words that he's saying, but he uh, reads them with all his uh, body and soul. So you're really drawn to these performances. I, I just want to uh, play a very short clip of him reading one of the poems so you get to experience uh, what a reading by Wang Zhang uh, looks like. So that was a, a, a short performance by Wan Zhang. Uh, so what happened when he created this beautiful house with the Chinese calligraphy is something that really shaped City of Asylum uh, to, to become the organization it is today because what happened was that neighbors who had probably never to encounter a Chinese person or you know seen Chinese uh, Mandarin characters, let alone on the facade of a house, they started uh, realizing that something special was happening and they stopped by and started reading this uh, poetry. And Wang Zhang, when he saw that there were people uh, in front of his house, he would come out and then read the poems for them. Uh, also, this inspired people uh, to start writing poetry. I'm talking about people who are not poets, uh, where basically the neighbors in on some Sonia way, they started writing poetry and sliding it underneath uh, the door of uh, Wang Zhang's house. So we started realizing that the presence of the writer uh, would change and shape the community. So our co-founders realized that the presence of Wang Zhang changed their lives. And then it started changing the lives of people living on Samsonia Way. And as people started coming around to see these houses, it started shaping the community and eventually the city as well. So as much as the writers gain by having a safe home here in Pittsburgh, I think it is us people who live in Pittsburgh and part of the community who gain the most. Our lives are enriched by their presence uh, here in our community. The other thing that, that uh, has happened, and you can see uh, here, you know, Wan Zhang would interact with people of all ages. He would go to schools and read and uh, tell his story. So people started thinking about injustice because, you know, it's very clear that this, uh, this person, this artist had been incarcerated. He had been tortured. He had had a, a, a terrible life uh, in a faraway country in China but he was now in the midst of our community and people started thinking about injustice and uh, some kids asked uh, extraordinary questions, asking him what it felt like to be imprisoned when he hadn't done anything bad. Uh, and this is like very young children. So we start seeing that you start thinking about your own community when you see these injustices uh, elsewhere. And this has become part of what City of Asylum is. We, uh, of course, uh, our primary focus for, for our uh, literary, for our writer in residence program is literary writers from uh, countries where they are being persecuted, when they are being censored, where they are being uh, incarcerated. But we also started thinking about different ways in which we can uh, impact our local community and start addressing some of, some of those uh, injustices, uh, addressing issues of uh, racial equity, of social injustice, of access to the art, because we realized that if anyone in this neighborhood who may not be particularly interested in poetry before came in contact with poetry uh, and with art, uh, with the public art, and it changed the way they connect with it, we could do something much larger. So uh, the other part of uh, what we are doing right now that, that also started uh, with Wan Zhang is uh, large scale uh, performances. So a year after he arrived, he arrived, Wan Zhang arrived here in 2004. And then the next year we had the first jazz poetry performance. And it is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it's uh, the combination of uh, poetry reading and jazz performances that influence each other. So is this intersection of different, uh, of the arts of different genre and how they can start impacting uh, each other. Uh, jazz poetry has been continued 
So we have presented already uh, 15 of those. This photo that you're uh, seeing right here is from the following year, so from uh, Jazz Poetry 2006, and it's the one, the same one that you can see here right uh, behind me. Uh, I think this picture really tells you everything, or mostly everything you need to know about CD of Asylum in one image. I'll use the cursor here, so you can see here Wan Zhang, uh, the poet who is uh, performing in front of his house. You can see here the house poem behind with the characters, Chinese characters uh, painted onto the facade. This is uh, Wan Zhang's wife here who was instrumental in uh, keeping his work safe uh, when he was in China. You can see uh, Wally Soyinka. He is a Nobel Prize winner from Nigeria. So, you know, an international personality coming here to uh, our street. Uh, you see uh, Oliver Lake uh, here is a saxophonist who is performing. And then we also have a, a drum core here uh, playing some uh, Nigerian inspired music. But some of the most important elements of City of Asylum is how the community embraces everything that is happening. So it's not just that the houses look pretty because they have now poetry, you know, there's a very deep meaning in that poetry that, that has been uh, painted onto the facades of the houses. There's a deep meaning of hiring an endangered writer who has found their voice here in Pittsburgh and to be able to attract this international uh, artist. The most important part is that we present that in a community setting uh, or of our performances to this day are free of charge. So we are bringing down those barriers. So if anyone in this crowd thought they did not like poetry or did not understand poetry or they did not like jazz or did not understand jazz. They came and they were able to experience it in person uh, in a very informal way. Everyone is welcome at City of Asylum. And that is what we have continued uh, to do to this day. Uh, this street that I'm showing you is Samsonia Way, the small street uh, where the, all the houses are located. Uh, you know, uh, incidentally, I also live on Samsonia Way. Coincidentally, I, I moved uh, here about three years ago, uh, and I'm very happy to be here in the neighborhood. So the organization, the mission of the organization has changed and has adapted to what we have been doing throughout the years, and it is today to build a just community by protecting and celebrating creative free expression. So I'm going to uh, focus now on each one of those pillars of uh, the work we do at City of Asylum. What you see here is a, a ceremony that we perform uh, before many or most of our programs is a placard ceremony. Uh, this particular one is happening at a tent that was the site where City of Asylum uh, presented most of its programs before we had the Masonic building that I showed earlier, which is now our uh, center, uh, cultural center. Uh, and the significance of those placards is that the names that you see in each one of those are names of writers who are being persecuted, censored uh, around the world. And on the, on the back side of the placards, you have more information about the writer, the level of threat, why they are being persecuted, have they been incarcerated, if so, for, uh, if so for how long, and so forth. So this placard ceremony means that anyone who comes to a city of asylum event is standing up for creative free expression around the world. And I have participated, of course, in many of them. And I have to tell you that from the audience side, it is something that, that is very powerful. Uh, for you to be lifting up the names of these people who are not backing down in the face of censorship. Uh, so this uh, ceremony uh, starts each one of our programs. And as I mentioned, uh, City of Asylum became the U United States hub of uh, ICORN, the International Cities of Refuge Network in uh, 2015. Uh, this network uh, includes cities in uh, Europe, all, all the major uh, European capitals are part of the network. There are several cities here in the United States. There are some of them as well in Mexico. And uh, as you can imagine, conditions for writers around the world uh, have worsened considerably, especially since the pandemic started. So there's uh, a great need for uh, a network like ICORN in the world. Uh, since the beginning, the inception of City of Asylum, we have hosted nine uh, exiled writers. 
uh, from nine different countries. We do have some some languages that are repeated, but all the all the countries are uh, different. So starting at the top left, you see Wang Zhang from China. Then next to him in the middle, you have Horacio Castellanos Moya from El Salvador. Um, he was the second writer in residence, and he also was instrumental in starting a uh, reading series. So he was uh, publishing a novel called Senselessness, and uh, for the uh, for the launching of that novel, the, our co-founders Diane Samuels and Henry Rees hosted a reading at their home, uh, and uh, that reading became a reading series, and eventually our presenting series. We now present more than 160 programs per year. Uh, at Alphabet City, our, our cultural center. So Horacio was also very important. And each one of these writers have shaped our organization in different ways. So next to uh, Horacio, you see Ket Mar from Burma. And of course, Burma, Myanmar, uh, is, there was a coup earlier this year, coup d'etat, and has been in our minds uh, ever uh, since. So it's, it's very current. Uh, I, if you remember, I mentioned the Burma house. Uh, that, that was created and, and she actually lived in that Burma house. Uh, moving down to the left column in the middle, you have Israel Centeno from Venezuela, so also a Spanish speaker. Uh, next to him, you have Yagub Yadali from Iran. Next to him, we have uh, Osama Alomar from Syria. Uh, at the bottom left corner, we have Tuhin Dash from Bangladesh. Uh, he is currently in our program. Uh, next to him, you have uh, Bokatu Siyum uh, from Ethiopia. He uh, was in our program for two years and he has recently started uh, a new residency in Washington, uh, Washington, DC. And at the bottom right corner, you see a black square. So one of our current writers, uh, we, we cannot reveal their name because of security concerns. Uh, we use the pseudonym Rama. Uh, this person is from Sudan and is a current uh, writer in residence as well. And um, the, the next part of, of my talk is going to focus on her work. Uh, I already mentioned the pandemic. The pandemic has been devastating for writers around the world. Uh, many governments have used the pandemic restrictions as an excuse to clamp down on uh, dissenters and have made the conditions even worse. You know, Burma, of course, is... Uh, we think about Burma all the time, but you see it in many countries as well. But for those who are here in Pittsburgh, of course, they are now, they have found a safe home and we, the community supports them. Uh, we surround them uh, with love and affection and uh, we make sure that, they are, that they're doing well. But if you can imagine you are in your country before leaving, you are already isolated because uh, the authorities are, are you know, persecuting you, are silencing you. You either have to stop uh, going out or you have to be very careful. So there's already a sense of isolation when you are in your country. Then you leave your country and you arrive here in the United States and you are in exile. So we also, even though you're safe and you're able to be able to keep writing uh, and you, you, you have a voice that you don't have to be worried about saying what you think, you still have that sense of exile by being away from your community, by being away from your country, your family, uh, your, you know, the, the, your friends, everything that, that you love back home. And then on top of that, there's a global pandemic where you cannot go out as freely as you were able to before. So this is almost like a, a triple sense of isolation uh, that uh, the writers uh, feel even when they are here in Pittsburgh. So for us, it was very important to make sure that they would uh, remain uh, creative during this time. And this next uh, project I'm going to talk about is one of the most beautiful uh, ways in which artists reacted to a pandemic. And this is going to speak to this uh, idea of, of the Arts and Agency Week, how art react to all of these uh, issues of today, how, how do they shape what is, what is happening, it, whether it be at the personal level, uh, or the artist level, and of course at the societal level as well. So uh, our writer uh, from Sudan and uh, our co-founder Diane Samuels met for a hundred days during the pandemic. And each day uh, the writer would write a poem and then Diane, who is a wonderful visual artist, uh, would create a collage in response to that uh, poem. And I'm going to show a couple of those <coughs> um, poems 
and collages that were created. Maybe give you a couple of uh, seconds so you can read through the poetry and appreciate the beautiful uh, artwork that accompanies it. These poems, some of them are about the small things you notice when you are all the time at home, it's that sense of isolation, but also what I would call the positive side of isolation is that you have time to savor some of those uh, moments. Also a moment of reflection and remembering everything that has shaped your life you know, the good things, the bad things as well. Remembering things that you experienced as a child. In some of the poems, as I said, uh, also underline some of the beauty that we still are able to find during these very difficult times of the COVID-19 pandemic and how that human connection brightens what uh, is otherwise a very difficult time in the life of everyone, and in this particular case, this writer. Because the writer's voices are very important to us, I wanted to uh, let you hear uh, the writer uh, reading some of the poems that they wrote, and you are going to actually hear their voice in this next video. Hello, everyone. My name is Rama. I'm uh, a writer in residence with uh, City of Asylum. And my two daughters and I are one of uh, Hello Neighbors families. I'm uh, gonna read on you a few short uh, poems that I have uh, read. And one second here, the video stopped so i am going to go back to small technical issue we should be able to go back right away so one more time from the beginning hello everyone my name is rama i'm uh, a writer in residence with uh, city of asylum and my two daughters and i are one of uh, hello neighbors families I'm gonna read on you a few short uh, poems that I have uh, written during this uh, quarantine. And they are uh, part of uh, 100 Days uh, Creative Project uh, with my friend. She uh, made um, 100 uh, collages and I wrote uh, 100 uh, poems, short poems. So uh, I will uh, read uh, first in Arabic and then in English. And the first one is about my daughter's birthday, uh, the first uh, birthday in America when our friend, uh, uh, when our friends surprised her by it. أقود الشموع فرقصت شعلتها كعيون أطفال متحمسة فتحت إبلة الباب فغنوا لها. وقفنا على دوائر متفرقة رسمت باللون الأزرق على أرضية الشارع تبعدنا جسديا 
لم نستطع احتضان بعضنا البعض لكن رقصنا على أنغام الجيتار رغم الموت وفي زمن العزلة القاسية تظل شعلة الحب متفدة متوهدة ترسم الابتسامة على شفاه طفلة في عيد ميلادها أشارت الطفلة إلى السماء الصافية انظري هتفت انظري إلى أمي إنها هناك لقد رأيتها تبتسم لقد تحولت إلى نجمة قفزت الطفلة فرحة وصفقت بيديها عادت أمي لن أخاف بعد الآن أمي نجمتي ستضيع غرفتي وتحرسني دوما طوال الليل كل الليالي خيط الضوء الأبيض الرفيع الذي تسلل إلى غرفتي السابحة في العتمة اقترب مني اقترب أكثر ثم قبلني ووعدني إن فتحت النافذة سيغمر الضوء قلبي Thank you for listening. So that was uh, one of our current writers in residence, Rama. That's the pseudonym that we use to protect uh, her identity. Um, so that was the, the, the portion about protecting creative free expression. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, our mission is to build a just community by protecting and celebrating creative free expression. And the celebration is, uh, uh, has always been a very important part of it, starting with uh, just poetry and the readings that I mentioned uh, that our first two writers uh, started. Uh, now we have uh, Alphabet City, which is the Masonic uh, building that we re remodeled and is now our cultural center. And in this space uh, is divided in thirds. The bottom floor is divided in thirds. Uh, the right side is a bookstore that specializes in works in translation and also works that uh, lift up underheard and underrepresented uh, voices. The middle part of it is a cultural center uh, where we hold, or we used to hold, or of our live programs. Uh, it, it sits about uh, 200 people or so, and it has a stage. And then the left side of uh, the bottom floor is a restaurant that is currently closed because of the pandemic. But of course, we are working on reactivating it uh, as soon as it is safe uh, to do so. And you are going to hear, uh, you're going to see the stage. This is the stage of Alphabet City. This is what it used to look like when we had live audiences enjoying uh, these performances. The audience is an important part, a very important part uh, of what we do at City of Asylum. Um, you will see uh, very diverse audiences uh, come to our programs. And uh, you also see this sense of friendship. They usually, after the events, uh, they used to stay and, and have questions, you know, basically hang out and enjoy each other's uh, company. You also have a chance to uh, talk to the writers and artists we present uh, really up close and personal as questions. Uh, I have presented many concerts uh, at City of Asylum uh, as a moderator, and I have to tell you that the questions you get from the audience tell you that they are really um, engaged and they bring great insights into the programs that we present. So for us, being friendly, uh, being hospitable, making sure that everyone is welcome and that we really uh, do not discriminate because of uh, age, race, income level, everyone is welcome at City of Asylum. And it really shows uh, when you come here. Um, during the last uh, year, uh, we have not been able to present programs in person. So we switched to online programming. 
uh, and we have presented, uh, still present more than 160 programs per year. By moving our programming uh, to a virtual format, we were able to increase our audience base from 17,000 in uh, 2019 to more than 24,000 in 2020. Uh, and also, as I said, our audiences are very diverse uh, and they have continued to be very diverse uh, during this time of uh, COVID-19. Um, last year, in November of uh, 2020, we welcomed the most recent uh, artists uh, in residence who arrived and the first musician in residence who is part of our program. Uh, she comes from Vietnam. Her name is Mai Koi, and she is a Vietnamese activist and singer. She decided to run for uh, office, elected office in Vietnam, uh, apparently, despite being a, 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 a non-democratic uh, government, the constitution allows you to self-nominate and she self-nominated for office uh, on an anti-censorship pro-democratic platform. And the police started harassing her and then uh, raiding her rehearsals and concerts and uh, creating trouble. So it, she eventually had to leave the country. Uh, Mike Coy uh, is a great singer and composer, and I had the privilege of uh, performing with her. So I, I may tell you a little bit about myself if we have time at the end of my presentation, but I am uh, originally from Colombia and I trained as a pianist and then as a conductor. And it was uh, a great opportunity for me to play with my koi, uh, the piano in a song that uh, she wrote. And I'll let uh, her tell the story. Of I was the song. a pop star, I had a lot of fans, I had a lot of show. Mm, the government invites me to sing in their ceremonies all the time. Mm, but I wasn't happy with the censorship system. Every time they censored me, they censored my song, I felt very angry. And I wanted to do something to change it because I couldn't feel free to create as an artist. I think we don't need to be censored. All of the artists in Vietnam have to work under the censorship system. And also we have to censor ourselves. I've I felt insulted every time I've, I've, I've been censored. So I became a distant artist. I, I decided to become an activist to protect my right to be an artist in Vietnam. I got problems from the government. The police raided my concert. They evicted me from my house. They tried to isolate me. They want to end my singing career in Vietnam. They make my life more difficult. But I, I will not stop fighting to be an activist. I, I will not stop fighting for freedom of expression. Just be patient is the one, the song that I wrote after I have met with President Obama in 2016. I was hopeful. I, I hope that he could help us. But after the meeting, nothing changed. And just be patient is what we is what he said to me in the meeting. It inspired me to write this song.
My Koi singing, just be patient. And uh, this was recorded just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and now I would like to talk to you about some of our current and future programs as well. So uh, we have presented several international uh, artists, writers and singers uh, for you today, but we also have many programs that focus on uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburghers. And the, one of the latest initiatives is called all Pittsburghers are poets. And it is the Poet Laureate program that uh, City of Assam is presenting. This has been um, supported by the Allegheny Regional Asset District, RAD. And we basically launched this program to create uh, four different categories of Poet Laureates. And this is the very first time that uh, we do it, or that it is done in Allegheny County. Uh, and some of the winners of, the, of this first uh, edition are Vincent Folks, who is the Youth Poet Laureate of Allegheny County. We have uh, MJ Shahin, who is the ASL Poet Laureate of Allegheny County. Paloma Sierra, the Emerging Poet Laureate of Allegheny County. And Celeste Ganey, the Poet Laureate of Allegheny County. And making sure that people are able to express themselves is something that is very important for us at the City of Asylum. And I have to tell you that uh, of the performances that we that I have attended over the last year during this pandemic, one of the most moving ones uh, was done by MJ Shahin, the, the ASL Poet Laureate of Allegheny County, because it's something that you don't get to experience uh, very often is an ASL poet and how they are able to express themselves. So I'm going to uh, play this uh, short uh, video of MJ uh, presenting one of her poems. Hi, everyone. Rad works here. Let me explain a little bit about who I am. I'm MJ. My real name is Mary Jean Shahen, but people call me MJ. And I'm going to let you know about the ABCs. The ABC stories are part of poetry. So you look at my hand shape, A, B, C, and we'll go all the way through Z. And I'll explain about this poem. The poem is very visual. You look at my facial expressions and my body language. Are we ready? Interpreter, turn your voice off, please.
Now the interpreter is going to turn her voice back on and interpret the poem. It's important to watch my hand shapes. Are we ready? Oh, my mother gave birth to a baby girl. Hey, hey, oh no, my baby is deaf. What is the family gonna say? They're gonna gossip. Oh, she'll be labeled. That will be her identity. She'll have an FM system to hear things. What are we gonna do? My parents pondered. And I just sat there eating my snack. My parents said, what are we gonna do? And I drank my drink. And they said, there's people out there. Maybe we don't have to feel guilty. We can teach her to do everything. Let's try. And they taught me and I looked up at them and I looked out into the world and said, no world, you are not going to oppress me with your autism. We will not accept that. Thank you for watching me. Rad works here. It was MJ Shahin, poet, uh, ASL poet laureate of Allegheny County, performing uh, one of her uh, poems. Something very different to hear, uh, to see, and hear an interpretation uh, of, of that uh, poem. Then the the last part will be some of the upcoming uh, programs that we have in the spring and summer of 2021. Uh, I'm very excited to announce uh, the inaugural. Pittsburgh International Literary Festival that is going to be held uh, from May 12th to May 21 of uh, the, the 2021. So just a couple of weeks uh, away. Uh, this is a 10 day festival that will uh, tackle the, some themes like migration, identity, displacement, and uh, everything around the idea of works in translation. We have more than 30 authors, translators, and artists uh representing 20 different countries from around the world and 14 languages and uh, we have some panels that uh, talk about the, the intersection of translation and social justice there's going to be one about uh, gender pronouns in spanish and how to make people feel included when you use language uh, the politics uh, when you hear a type of language a dialect being spoken on the street in the, on the streets and then you look at books and they don't reflect the same language uh, and also um, representation, especially racial representation in translation. We have uh, uh, very uh, great uh, authors, renowned uh, authors like Pulitzer Prize uh, winner uh, Viet Tan Nguyen, uh, as well as uh, uh, Olga Tokarczuk, uh, Nobel Prize winner uh, from Poland. And the other program that we have this summer is called Summer on Samsonia, as I, you may remember. I, I mentioned the tent where we used to have our, all of our programs. I think because of COVID-19, we decided that this would allow us to uh, go back outdoors uh, where people will be able to attend some of the performances. You see here as well uh, some of our programs in other places, not just the tent, but also in different gardens around uh, our neighborhood of the central north side uh, here in Pittsburgh. And uh, that uh, brings us to the end of uh, my presentation. I, I uh, hope you get an idea of what City of Asylum is doing here in Pittsburgh, all the different programs, how the uh, writers have shaped this neighborhood, this city, and how we have been able to become a, a hub for global culture in Pittsburgh. And now that we are able to uh, uh, stream live uh, and stream online, we are able also to bring Pittsburgh to the world. Uh, because of going online this last year, uh, we were able to reach audiences in all 50 states and more than 65 countries around the world. So we, we have really uh, been paying attention to all of these uh, changes that the pandemic has brought, and we have tried to adapt quickly and make sure that we continue uh, advancing our mission, even though it has been uh, very difficult, uh, you know, for arts organizations and for everyone, for, for, for people, for, the, uh, for all of us as a society and as a civilization uh, to be able to deal with the restrictions and challenges of the pandemic. Uh, but we continue moving forward and presenting these initiatives that will bring the arts to everyone here in Pittsburgh and now the United States and 
the world. So Senara, I go back to you. Let's see if there are any questions uh, in the chat. I'm very happy to respond to any of them. Thank you so much. That was very powerful. And actually, uh, thank you for doing all that. Every artist and writer, uh, I feel like they have part of refugee in, the, in themselves. And I, I did arrive to this country as a refugee. So some po poems and some, uh, uh, and especially this uh, sing, uh, um, singer uh, touched me from Vietnam, uh, you know, because I, I do remember a lot of people would say, you know, just be patient, you know. <laughs> And then from that being patient, patient, sometimes it just bring whole chaotic situations. So that was very uh, powerful. And some of the things bring uh, back some memories. We don't have any questions, uh, but we do have uh, some comments. Uh, they love uh, Alphabet Reading Garden when they went to Pittsburgh and um, there is a comment, Iri community is com comprised of relatively high number of former refugees where uh, we are known their cre creative ar and artistic talent present with the community. Oh, there is something, uh, is there anything that um, new Americans in community can express their talent? And there is also something from Facebook uh, the work you do is being amazing as a native Pittsburgher who is currently going to school outside of Erie to be an uh, art therapist community and social action through the creative arts is very close to me. There is so much room for processing, exploring and sharing voices and experiences through art. Art needs to, uh, art needs non-languages what bridges humanity. Thank you for this presentation. Artist expression, freedom, our voices and our truth. No one should have to live uh, a stifled life. Thank you for what you do, uh, having to adapt to doing wellness spaces online with a global outreach. I agree, this is important work. So a lot of thanks for uh, your work. Well, I, I want to uh, thank Eric uh, for taking the time to, to write uh, that very thoughtful comment. And I agree that, that art has no language, it's a language uh, on itself, and it allows us to communicate and share experiences even with people that we might not understand verbally. Uh, and that's what is very important. And of course, being a literary organization, we are also very interested in being able to understand people verbally uh, and in the, through literature and uh, through writing. And that's why uh, this festival of uh, works in translation, uh, I think will expand anyone's um, idea of the world because the art allows us to experience what other people have experienced. And even though we may have not uh, lived through all of those experiences in person, it at least gives us a glimpse of what life is like in other countries under different circumstances with different uh, cultural backgrounds, different opinions, and it enriches our own lives. Uh, but I think that uh, art all ha also has that uh, therapeutic uh, component that by being able to share the experiences, you, you, you feel like you're not alone uh, and also, as you express yourself, you're able to put uh, all the different uh, traumatic events that you may have, all the different problems, you're able to, uh, you know, just bring them out of yourself and share them uh, with other people, whether they be artists or part of the audience. <clears throat> and I think, Senara, what you, you said is also very powerful that you, by listening to somebody from Vietnam, which, you know, pro I assume is very far away from where yeah. you come from, uh, <clears throat> but it's still that shared experience that, you have felt that impatient as you're trying to, to navigate the, the, the path of getting out of your country and coming into the United States as a refugee. And uh, uh, my Koi is from a different country, different path, different time frame, different issues might maybe, but is that that uh, human connection that you know what it feels right. like and you feel like by hearing somebody else 
say it or sing it or perform it, you feel understood. So uh, yeah. thank you so much for that. Um, in terms of the question uh, about the Erie community and with the suggestion how we can nurture, protect and celebrate the creative and expressive talent of our new American community. Uh, I think having uh, conversations like the one we are having today in, during the Arts and AGC Week is, is a very important uh, place to start, just recognizing that newcomers, uh, new Americans bring their own uh, cultural backgrounds and their own uh, artistic uh, endeavors. And I think making sure that they feel validated and then, then you find who in your community has that uh, need for, a, for an artistic outlet for what they are going through. I think it is very important to identify. Uh, and of course, you know, we are a grassroots organization. Uh, this was created from the, the ground up, so to speak, by members of the community. Uh, I finding those uh, members of the community and finding a space where you could do it is very important. Uh, the virtual world has made it easier because you don't necessarily have to have a physical space. Uh, like right now, we are, we are not in the same space where every one of us is in front of a screen uh, attending this event, but we are there in cyberspace uh, together. So I think finding spaces like this and identifying people from the community would be something uh, where you could start. Um, there's a question about the city of Asylum do any programming around World Refugee Day. Perhaps there is an opportunity for some uh, collaborative programming between Pittsburgh and Erie. And uh, I started at City of Asylum on October 1st of 2020. So uh, I, they, you know, I, but I remember at some point there were some conversations earlier in the year about uh, working together. So I think in the past, uh, City of Asylum has done uh, some collaboration around uh, World uh, Refugee Day. But you know that's a great, great uh, suggestion. Back to you, Sena. Sorry, I mute myself. Yes, uh, 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 thank you very much. I I don't see any questions, and I want to thank all uh, our audience on uh, through Zoom and through Facebook and YouTube channel on Erie Arts. Uh, week. Thank you so much. And it was very, uh, uh, I, I was honored actually to be part of this today. Thank you. Well, Sena, thank you very much. And yes, thank you everyone uh, for being here with us today. I also wanted to thank one more time Erie Arts and Culture for inviting me to be part of this very important conversation and also Patrick Fisher for reaching out. Uh, it's been my pleasure to be part of uh, Arts and Agency Week. Have a good day. Thanks.